Hey guys and gals, I am Paladin. If you were to take a quick gander at the Let's Plays that I've done, it makes it very obvious that I was a GameCube kid. I got my GameCube in 2005, or not 2005, when I was 5 or 6, so 2002 or 2003. No, I'm not that young. Uh, my first game was Luigi's Mansion, then Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Party, Super Mario Sunshine, Pikmin 2, Pikmin 1, Pac-Man World 2, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, Wait a sec. One of those things is not quite like the other things, and yet that thing most certainly belongs. Welcome to my Let's Play of Pac-Man World 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. Or, technically, for the, the PC because I'm emulating this. This is a game that I have never met anyone who's let alone heard of it or played it. Which is odd to me, because in that list of fantastic titles which are now known as cl to be classics, I consider Pac-Man World 2 to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of them. Except maybe for Pikmin 2, but I have a very obvious bias there. Pac-Man World 2 is a fantastic game, but it's one that really stands out from both its franchise of being a a top-down arcade game, but also from the games of the time. It's a 3D platformer. A 3D platformer that I think deserves more recognition. I think is worth the pl worth playing. But don't just take my word for it. I'm going to jump into the game sooner rather than later so that you can see what I'm talking about rather than hear what I'm talking about. This is Pac-Man World 2. This is one of my childhood games. And let's jump in. fought against this very evil. In ancient times, the great wizard Pack created a power 
powerful potion that turned five fruit from Packland into the golden fruit that was stolen today. Armed with these magical fruit and a great deal of bravery, Sir Packalot faced the all-powerful ghost known as Spooky. Sir Packalot defeated Spooky and imprisoned him. And he has remained there until now. Pac-Man, the golden fruit are in the hands of the devious ghosts, and Spooky is on the loose again. You must retrieve the golden fruit and defeat Spooky, or all of Pac-Land will be doomed. Pac-Man, welcome to Pac-Village, the heart of Pac-Land. You have a long adventure ahead of you. How would you know? I mean, this only happened last night. He could just be, like, right outside the village eating breakfast. You don't, you, you don't actually know. But you can always return home for some diversion. The arcade is in the building to the right. Sue is usually there taking care of things. She can give you a tour of the arcade if you like. Now, on to more important matters. Here is a health wedge, and here is where my text will be skipped, because I am going to be very redundant if I do not skip this, because I would like to give the tutorial myself, explaining this me game's mechanics in my own way, rather than leaning my commentary on arbitrary and very rigid text boxes. So without further ado, let's skip through all the text, and I can point out various things as they appear. Dot. D pizza. D penny. Sun! Fence! Oh, I mean, us! This is us! How wonderful it is to live in the game of video games where you can talk to yourself in the third person! <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness. Am I not the only one who got a bit of a VeggieTales vibe from that, that opening cutscene, or both opening cutscenes? Technically, the, the first cutscene where they're stealing the fruit takes place on the game's title screen, but I thought it was better to cut that so that they were back to back. So this is Pac-Man World 2, and most games, like for example Wind Waker, I don't, I don't really bother to explain the game's mechanics, but because this is Pac-Man and a 3D platformer, eh, I should probably, I should probably explain. A is jump. Pressing A in the air is a B bounce, or a butt bounce, but the game refers to it as a B bounce, because butt is an inappropriate word, children! Uh, pressing B in midair does a flip kick, which uh, throws out a hitbox. It's one of our means of attacking, although the B bounce is our primary means of attacking. Speaking of attacks, holding B while on the ground does a B dash, which is very Sonic-esque, and it was probably just ripped straight from the game. Jumping, we can jump out of it, although it's kind of weird, because sometimes it just kind of cancels it. I'm gonna have to get a handle on that. Uh, while while running, while charging up this this B dash, we can press A to do that, which means that buffering the input. Yes, I discovered an advanced technique for this game. Of course I did. Does this? I have no re I have no purpose for this. Although I guess this gives us a, a short hop because our short hop is actually pretty high. So this does give us a short hop, which is pretty nice. So every level has fruit. Every level has fruit. Those are one of the collectibles of the game. There is a reward for 100%, and I'm actually probably getting a little bit ahead of myself. Instead of telling you about the reward for 100%, let's go inside the... Where is it? The arcade. Let's see if I can thread the needle here. Oh, that was perfect. Pac-Man, my name is Sue, and I am you I'm usually here running the arcade. I have no clue why I have the same voice as the other man. Maybe it's because my I my appearance is so incidental that it is not worth attributing a voice to me. Let me tell you a little bit about each of the games in the arcade. Pac-Man was first released in 1980. You need 10 tokens to play Pac-Man. So there are tokens scattered throughout every level, and once again I'm going to skip this text. Getting those tokens, there are eight tokens in every single level. Getting those tokens unlocks what are actually perfect emulations of previous Pac-Man games. Meaning the value for this game, if you're a Pac-Man enthusiast, is pretty great. You can find this on eBay for very cheap. It's not a rare game by any means. There's a, juke a jukebox here, which is probably the only thing worth saving tokens for, which I'll more on that later. Uh, and this lets you you listen to the game's soundtrack. 
Now, as we go through this episode, I want, and the next actually, I want you to be paying attention to the music. I'm not going to be talking about the music just yet, which is kind of weird for me to be setting up a, a conversation which we'll have in a full episode. There's one of the tokens actually. But just believe me, and I, I just want you to pay attention. Rather than tell you my opinions on the music and have those cloud your perception as we move forward, I would rather you you develop your own opinion about the music so that when I talk about it, you have something to compare my opinion to, rather than just make my opinion dictate yours, or rather than let my opinion cause a uh, change the formulation of yours. Okay, so this first level is, is mainly just a sandbox for us to get every single collectible if we choose, also just to learn the, the controls. There are only one or two enemies in this entire area, this being one of them, which we can just splat. Come on. Come on. Yeah, you bleed that green blood. It can't be- it doesn't have to be rated M if it's green blood. So, and that's going to be one thing that I'm going to point out here. You might notice that I'm- I'm pretty much done in this area. Well, I'm not done, but I- I'm- I'm ready to leave. And that's something I want to talk about. This Let's Play is not going to be 100%. Because, A, I want to encourage you to play the game, and B, there's a reason f as to why I'm not doing this 100% that I'll be getting into once we leave this level. For, for now, I'm going to try and grab things as I go, because this game, I, in my opinion, this game was not meant to be played 100%, at least not in the format that I'm playing it, but also... I want- I want that jukebox. I- I really want that jukebox. That's like the only thing that's worth earning in my opinion. And, uh, and I- I want to earn that. Uh, let's talk to you before I leave, because you're the one person I haven't spoken to. <clears throat> Sorry, Pac-Man, the ghosts vandalized the museum when they stole the golden fruit. We need 150 tokens to complete the repairs. Come back when you- uh, when you have enough. Now, there are only one, or, well, not only, but there are 180 tokens, to my knowledge, in the game. Or 181, I believe, because uh, the reward for 100%, every single fruit, is one single final token. Okay, so, I'm pretty much done here. I, I'm gonna kill this ghost. And then let's leave the level, because this, this area is not really a level. We can actually only spend, like, five seconds in here if, if we want. So let's move on to the first actual level. Okay, here's my reason. There, there are fruit in every level, but also, part of getting 100% means getting every single pack dot in every single level. And later on, we're going to be seeing just how annoying that task would be if you're, if you're let's playing the game. Because some of these pack dots are in between jumps, between platforms that fall as soon as you touch them. So if you miss one pack dot in a level, you have to redo that level, which would be a nightmare to do. Oh, that would be so frustrating. And so, <laughs> and so, since it's way more suited for a private playthrough where you're able to go through, do maybe, maybe five run-throughs of an entire level. Once trying to get every cherry. Once trying to get every strawberry. Another time getting every token. I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to do 100%. Also, we just did a Let's Play of Breath of the Wild, which ended up being a blind 100% Let's Play, where I got 900 collectibles. So I'm, I'm a bit burnt out on 100%. I, I'm gonna be honest. This game is intended, is fully intended to be a bit of a, like a couch Let's Play. It's going to be very casual. I'm not going to be trying to play very well. I'm not going to try and speed run the levels. I'm not trying to 100%. I'm just trying to have fun and share one of my childhood games. That's it. That's it. If you want to 100% the games, and specifically if you want to play all of those arcade levels, buy this game for like five bucks on eBay. Do it. Play it. Emulate it. Oh, by the way, I'm emulating this game. <laughs> the Bear Basics. Now, unfortunately, these first, this first entire, entire, entire world is very tutorial based. This first level isn't really a level as much as a now linear version of that playgroundy first level. 
So we're, we're not going to be able to see the actual level design until a little bit later on in the world. Maybe towards, maybe next episode. Next episode we're definitely going to start seeing where the level design starts to shine and starts to take it. Oh, did I fail to kill this ghost? That's awkward. I'm also not trying to get every pack dot, but I guess, I guess I am, ow. Well now I need to get every pack dot to show off a mechanic. There is a mechanic in this game. Ever, for every 50 pack dots you obtain, you get a slight, ha, <laughs> ah. Is that what they are going for? Oh, I never got that. A slice of life. That's so good. Is okay, okay, that's that's perfect. That's charm right there. You don't get that in games nowadays. It's literally a slice of life. That's so good. Oh man. That's I've never thought about that before. I've I've literally never thought about that before. They don't call it that. That's so good. Oh, I love it. But yeah, the there are a bunch of signs everywhere, and literally everywhere, like, look at this. We can't, we can barely go, like, one screen without finding a sign telling us how to jump, how to grab things, when these are very simple mechanics, but I guess back in this day, it was, it kind of new? I guess it was, it was new for Pac-Man, so they're making this assuming that a Pac-Man fan is playing, but these, I guess, and they're also well established now. Crates can be opened if you butt bounce on them. You can also hit them with a kickflip. Yeah, cool. Try out the buck bounce on that pack cub, but be careful. Okay. Ah, I did it. Uh, coming from Pikmin 2, these always reminded me of bull bears. Like, they're like the same thing. They're also, though, way more or more or less efficient than bull bears. Bull bears come back to life when you kill them. These things, they leave a grave. They literally turn into their own tombstone. Reducing the need to bury them, conserving on la or it's land preservation, they're like the master species. It's They're absolutely the master race of this world. Pack people, when they die, they like wilt. They wilt and then turn into a, a weird wilted corpse of themselves. But but pack cubs, mm, they, they're efficient. They are the masters. Speaking of masters, guess what? That, that really classic game, Super Mario Galaxy? Yeah. It's actually a fraud. It's a fraud here, ladies and gentlemen. It stole from this game. The warp, st the, like the warp star thing? Yep. This did it first. This is proving that Mario Galaxy was a sham, and this game is better than Mario Galaxy, which, to be honest, this game is really good, so don't... Don't, 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 don't think it was a joke. This game is actually really good. This is kind of weird. There's a this path. Was this supposed to? Oh, this path originally went here, and then, then there was like a landslide. I can't turn the camera. Uh, yeah, I think this path was supposed to like originally curve around. That's kind of cool. Okay, Th that is one thing that we're going to start noticing. The camera mechanics are really bad. That is the one of the few things that I can fault this game on. L centers the camera behind you, but it doesn't work when you need it to, and we're going to be seeing that in just a moment. You know, I just thought of a cool usage for this slice of life mechanic. I could keep my pack dot count hovering around one of the 50 increments, and as long as I do that and can avoid pack dots, I could effectively have an extra unit of health. That's something I should keep in mind going forward. Okay, I, I should probably be ignoring these pack dots. Like I said, I'm not going for 100%. But I'm also also not trying to speedrun the levels either. I'm trying to find that nice little mixture where I can, I don't have to feel bad if I miss a collectible, but also I don't have to feel beho beholden. Wait, I think that's the same thing. I don't need to get every collectible, and I don't need to feel bad for not getting every collectible. Okay, let's use a flip jump to grab that. There's some water here, which we can s actually we don't take damage from. I don't know why. I guess Spl Splatoon has kind of spoiled me on taking damage from water, which is weird. Considering the amount of games I've played that, like, water mechanics are a thing, Splatoon has now taught me that water is bad. While swimming, press the B button to swim down, and the A button to swim up. Go for a dip. Now, this is also, uh, this is a prime, this is a perfect example of where the camera is actively bad. I cannot adjust the camera at all here, so things like this apple on the corner of the screen, not only can I barely see it, but if I try to actually get it, it's really hard because you can't really gauge the get the depth perception. The only reason I was able to there is because I saw the shadow, but for this melon, I, where I can't see the shadow, I don't know where it is. In fact, I can barely see it. Somehow I managed to get it. 
So that's one of the few downsides of the game, but I guess I can't fault this game for having it because most platformers at this, this point in time, they had this problem. Since, I mean, Mario 64 really... Mario 64 pioneered this this mechanic uh, of having a free camera that you can control and that game I think has not aged too well just because of the camera. It's not saying that it's bad or the level design's bad, in fact they're fantastic, but it could definitely use a, a re-release which has a more functional camera. And th the DS release definitely didn't fix it. Also the camera, back in this day, the camera is used to hide things. So if you manage to turn the camera around, there's a token inside this this little boat. These crates down here we can't get. We don't have any attacks underwater. Yet. Not yet. But one day we will. This this crate, this this sign will explain. Uh, it has a fruit marked on it, and it can only be opened if you have that fruit. So we have that fruit. We can get that. So a lot of levels which have those chests only have one instance of that fruit in the entire level. And many of them... It's really hard to get, so it's like it's like a double secret, or at the very end of the level, you see one of those crates, and you're like, oh man, I have no idea where that fruit is. And so you have to replay the level. It's kind of a jerk move, but it also it also pays to pay attention. It pays to get fruit, because it can help. Do we actually... Uh, I don't think we actually have to take a hit there. There's a token over, that, over those thorns, but this is an upgrade that I think will alleviate that. This, speaking of Super Mario Galaxy ripping off this game... This game ripped off Mario 64. We are now Metal Pac-Man. And we shall get all of the melons. Oh, yeah, I can just do that. Let's grab that. Just like Metal Mario, we have to wait for, for the upgrade to time out. We can't actually leave. And they didn't add a slope for us to leave on, unfortunately. So we have to wait. It's almost done. And there we go. So we all, we've already had one upgrade, we fought some enemies, we've beaten our first real level, the, the actual first level doesn't count. So I say we finish this level. Yes, it's over. These levels are pretty short. That, there's a perfect reason, and there's some enemies. That's a perfect reason why I'm not going to be speedrunning the, the, uh, these levels. Because if I was, we would be done so quickly. Like, maybe four minutes? It would probably take me all of, actually less than four minutes, maybe like two minutes. To beat this level. So, I'm not going to be speedrunning these, but I'm also going to be taking my my time. Like, I'm not going to be getting all the collectibles, but I'm not going to be speedrunning these either. Alright, that's the end of the level, and that's it for this episode. Well, it's the end of the gameplay part of this episode. There are a couple things that I need to talk about before I end the video, but if you're just here for the gameplay, then feel free. The episode is over. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, for all of you people who stayed, uh, first of all, welcome, but second of all, uh, I just wanted to talk about the episode structure of this Let's Play. Because it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to feel a little bit more like Pikmin in terms of structure, where it's milestone-based versus time. Uh, I'm shooting to complete one world every other episode. There are four levels every single world, including the boss, and so that means that we're going to be doing two levels per episode. Except for next time, we're actually going to be doing three. And the reason for that is because Pack Village isn't actually a level in the first world. It's completely separate. So I would have done another level this episode, but the fact is that we're already at 23 minutes, and a lot of the preliminary stuff of Let's Play, like starting it and the story, uh, kind of filled that runtime. So we're going to be doing three levels next episode, and then we can get back to doing two levels per episode and knocking out a world uh, in a very well-paced fashion. Okay, that's going. That's what I want to talk about for the episode, the episode structure, but there's one other thing I've been wanting to talk about, and that is an update on the Kirby Let's Play, because I'm sure many of you are very surprised that this isn't Kirby, because I've been planning that for well over a year now, I've been talking about it, and the official story has been the art's not done. Well, I have an update on that. The art is done. In fact, the art it was finished shortly before this Let's Play began, but at that point, I, I had locked into playing this. I had locked in, I had done the art myself, and I was, I was pumped. I had done research for Pac-Man World 2, and so I wanted to play it. So, basically, Kirby's Return to Dreamland is still going to happen, but 
it and this game are flip-flopped in the order that I wanted to do them. So after this Let's Play, Kirby's Return to Dreamland will happen. The art is done, most of the series is already edited, uh, I believe like 90% of the game has been recorded and I have those recordings and they're safe. So Kirby is happening, just not quite yet. This is going to be a very short Let's Play, probably like 14 episodes tops. So, you won't have to wait that long for Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Alright, that is going to be it for this episode. I will release new episodes of Pac-Man World 2 every Tuesday and Thursday. And I'll see you guys next time where I play a level which sounds like it was ripped straight from Donkey Kong Country, Canyon Chaos. See you all then.